Hey stinky friends, welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm really excited about because it's been a little while since I talked about plants, which are one of my favorite things, honestly, to talk about. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna be talking about the four best plants, in my opinion, for those of us who are plant murderers. I am a reformed plant serial killer. I no longer kill as many plants as I buy don't look at her. <laughs> Me and her have beef. She is my number one arch nemesis at the moment. Do you see that yellow leaf? Monstera adesoni. Not for the faint of heart and definitely not for plant killers. Number one on my list of plants for people who like to kill plants is, drum roll please, the snake plant. This little guy has been thriving on neglect for the last... How long have I had you? It's been a while. He shouldn't be this small, but he does... Where he's at at the moment doesn't get much light. So he's still alive, but he just doesn't grow very fast at the moment. These guys are great because you don't have to water them that often. If you don't want them to grow, they don't need much sunlight. You can also buy them a lot bigger than this than this little guy. I have a much larger snake plant that I got from, I believe, Lowe's. So you can buy them already a lot larger than this and then just keep them that size <laughs> by shoving them in a dark corner. So that's really up to you. Number one, snake plant. Number two, oh, so throughout this list, I tried to bring in different kinds of plants. So depending on which kind of plant you're aesthetic you're looking for, thank you. Hopefully, there's one here for you. So, number two is gonna be my succulent of the group, and that is the chocolate soldier. Oh. I think these guys are the cutest succulent because they're like little hairy, little hairy guys and they've got little brown tips on their leaves. I really like that, I think it's really cute. These guys are in indirect sun at the moment and they are loving life. And I water them maybe once, once a month, I think. They're obviously not on a regimented schedule, very low maintenance, highly recommend if you're looking for like a little, just a little guy, you know? Just a little guy. <laughs> the next plant that I'm gonna re recommend is more of a leafy plant and I've mentioned it a ton of times throughout all of my videos, whether they be vlogs or actually plant specific, because this is probably my favorite plant ever to, it's my favorite to propagate. It's my favorite to just have in the house. And I think there are a bunch of different kinds that you can get. And I think all of them are really, really pretty. It is, to nobody's surprise, a pothos. They have a scientific name, but it's really long and I'm not gonna try and pronounce it. This is my favorite plant just in general, but also my favorite plant for how low maintenance it is. I will say this, this plant has been an indirect light um, and it's growing quite slow compared to my pothos that is in direct light, which I'll put up here. So yes, it can be in shade slash low light situations, but it's going to grow slower and probably be smaller leaves. These guys also love to climb. So if you can get them in a situation where they can have something to, that they can climb up, that's gonna encourage their leaves to grow bigger and the plant in general just to be healthier. I love these guys, absolutely love them. Next up on my list, and this is plant is good if you're looking to fill a big space um, and you want something that's big and green and leafy and that is the Monstera Deliciosa. This is one of my fastest growing plants that I've ever owned. This is what it looked like when I first got it. And this is what it looks like now. And that is a two year difference. So they grow really, really fast. I've only ever put them in really sunny windows. I think that they do really well in sunny windows. I haven't tried more of a shady situation, so I can't recommend doing that. But this plant grows big and it is a growing, it is a uh, climbing plant as well. So if you stick some moss poles in and encourage the roots to grow up, they will climb up the moss poles. And again, just like the pothos, that encourages their leaves to be bigger and the plant to be healthier. 
so just food for thought. My Monstera, other than needing a sunny window, is one of my most low maintenance plants, especially for how much growth that she has given me over the last two years. She's not on a particularly regimented watering schedule and I really just as soon as her leaves start to look a little bit sad is when I give her a bunch of water and she loves it. I will say that when I did my first repot of my Monstera, I've only done one from the cement pot that she was first in to the bigger one that she's in right now. The roots are very, very thick and they grow very, very fast, just like the rest of the plants. So just keep that in mind for when you're doing a repot. Sometimes, sometimes you need to repot a bit more frequently with a Monstera, at least in my opinion. And then the last plant is something that's a little bit more deserty, a little bit more exotic, and it is the aloe, the aloe plant. Now I've had two aloes. The first I had for four or five years, I think. I had him for a while and I did butcher him. I did decapitate him because I thought... <laughs> now this was a while ago, so don't... I don't want any mean comments about this. He wouldn't fit in the car when we were moving houses. And so I decapitated him other than like the top leaves all the way down. This was a bad idea for many reasons. Firstly, uh, he like basically bled to death. Secondly, it's my cars stunk like B.O. because they are very, they're really stinky when you cut off all the leaves and it was just sticky. Don't not a good idea. I should have just gave him to a friend or left him behind because he died a horrific death in my hands. But his brother, the new aloe, is thriving. So I keep my aloe in front of a window, but a window that doesn't get any like direct sunlight and it's doing really, really well. I water it whenever I feel like it, really. I think you're supposed to water aloe plants when you squish their leaves and their leaves feel squishy. I don't think they're called leaves, but I'm not an expert. But when their leaves feel squishy and not firm is when you're supposed to water an aloe. This aloe that I've got has grown really quite a lot in the last two years that I've had him. And I think that they look really cute. Overall, my aloe has not really given me any grief. The only way that my aloe has stressed me out is because my cat keeps trying to eat it. So I have sprinkled chili powder all over each of the extremities to ward off any cat teeth. But other than that, I highly recommend. So yeah, those are the five plants that I recommend from one plant killer to another that <laughs> that have been the kindest to me on my plant growing journey. So if you have any other recommendations for easy plants to grow and keep alive, please let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you again soon with another video. Bye.